Hey guys, what's going on? It's Vic here, back with another Madden 21 video. In today's episode, we're going to be rebuilding the Atlanta Falcons. They don't have any new additions like I was doing in my previous videos, like Quan Alexander with the Saints or Desmond King on the Titans. Just things like that, but either way, you guys asked for it. I had one DM in my Instagram. You guys definitely should go check that out. It's not my personal Instagram. I'm not going to be releasing my personal Instagram until I feel comfortable, but for right now, it's just my YouTube Instagram, so you guys should definitely go check that out. But other than that, guys, it is time to jump into the team. So here we are with the overlook of the team as we have Matty Ice as our QB. That's 28 to 3. What's that? 28 to 3. And perfect conditions. There's no way you could screw this landing up. Yeah, totally. Uh, ice, uh, you all right? Yeah. Matty, Matty Ice, Ice Man, you good? Oh God, he's joking. And he is on the older side, so he will regress. I do plan to replace him with Quick Draw and Fearless as his superstar abilities, but I will use him in the first year. Todd Gurley is here, and I expect him to do pretty good on this team. I feel like whenever they actually utilize Todd Gurley in the right way, he's a really good player. We have Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley as well. Hayden Hurst, who they picked up from the Ravens for a 2 and a 5, I believe. 2 and a 5 draft pick, of course. And uh, this O-line is looking great, except maybe Jake Matthews. I remember playing with him last year and he was such a big pain in the butt because his cap room is insane it's dumb stupid a uh, contract yeah 20 million per year next year i'm sorry i'm gonna have to trade him away it's unrealistic i know everyone's gonna yell at me for that but i'm not paying 20 million a year for an 81 overall offensive lineman are you kidding me i'm not gonna pay that and everyone else here uh d line is looking good I would like to start this left end as a defensive tackle since we have Dante Fowler Jr. and Tack McKinley. Dante Fowler Jr. is, by the way, overpaid, but I'm still probably going to keep him on the team. Uh, this linebacking core has potential. Uh, free safety, we need to upgrade. And Keanu Neal, I feel like he should be a higher overall. And I don't know who this guy is. Ricardo Allen. Uh, I'll probably trade him because he's 28 years old and he probably will regress. So other than that, there's actually going to be a lot of trades because there is this team is definitely older, I would say definitely definitely older and before we get into it i actually have to do the memes just for you guys the the young legend young ho ku legendary name young ho ku out here needs to be a superstar x factor and before i hear in the comments oh you cheated the game guys it's it's young ho ku he's a kicker a superstar x factor doesn't even affect kickers okay and I'm not going to re-sign him for a bigger deal. It doesn't matter. It's a, it's a kicker, guys. It's it's for the memes. Don't don't worry about it. Don't yell in the comments. His ability is he doesn't have an ability. So don't yell at me in the comments. Young Hoku is an absolute legend. But other than that, boys, it is time to jump into some trades. Now, as I said before, we are going to be trading away our left tackle and the strong safety because he's 28 and he will regress. We're trading away Jake Matthews, Ricardo Allen for a first, a first, and a six from the Philadelphia Eagles. Again, I'm not paying one O-lineman 20 mil per year, especially an 81 overall lineman. Not that great. Next, we're trading away our defensive tackle on our left end for a first and a six from the Arizona Cardinals. This is just a cap room situation, and they're both depth players. Next, we're trading away our... Uh, Something Denard. I don't know his first name, but still, we're trading away our defensive back on our right end for a first round pick. And this is what the team looks like after the trades. And obviously, we look the same, except for the left tackle, obviously. And defensively, we look the exact same. I wouldn't say there's any big difference. Uh, Demonte Kazi is here, though, or Kaz, however you pronounce it. I'm sorry if I mispronounce it and you're raging at me in the comments right now. But still, uh, we're going to start. I believe AJ Terrell it is. I don't know officially. If I don't know these names again, I'm sorry. But other than that, let's get into the midseason mark. So here we are at the midseason mark coming off a win to the Carolina Panthers as we are 6-2. and two. That is very interesting above the Saints and the Broncos are 6-1. and one. Yeah, what a parallel universe we are in right now. But still, we have players to resign such as Alex Mack and I'm, I'm just not going to resign him. 34 years old. He's going to regress very heavily. Maybe a one-year deal. He wants $10 million per year. I, I just can't do that. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Todd Gurley, though, I would like to keep around. And, um, yeah. So, how much money does he want? Around 5 mil per year. I can definitely do that. And he stays with the team. Keanu Neal, I would love to keep around as well. He's definitely a standout strong safety on this team. He has regressed a little bit this year, though. Not in Madden, but uh, I guess his overall got demoted. But he stays with the team. Tack McKinley is here. I would like to keep him around. 24 years old. It seems like the Falcons never re him, and he always hits free agency. I guess that's because they're in a big cap situation whenever they don't trade away those players that I just did. So uh, other than that, we do re-sign him, I believe. 
And yes, we do. So Demonte Kaz here or Kazi, whatever you want to call it. I'll see how he regresses at the end of the season because once you hit 28, you start to regress, which really sucks in Madden. But uh, other than that, there's no one else here that I have an interest for. So yeah, apart from that, guys, I would say that it's time to jump into the playoffs. Now, here we are in the playoffs as we finished 10 and 6. A little bit of a drop off, in my opinion. But still, coming off a loss to the Buccaneers, only that game decided who wins the division. So that was a big game, but we lost. And Matty Ice did pretty solid. Uh, 16th best defense, only in 20th best uh, defense. Uh, I meant to say 16th best offense and 20th best defense. But Matty Ice did all right, but over 4,000 yards, which is pretty good. Todd Gurley, 11 touchdowns, over 1,000 yards. I don't know how, why Brian Hill has more touchdowns. EA still needs to fix that glitch. They need to fix everything in their game. But Julio Jones was a monster. 1,200 yards, 7, 7 TDs. I'm stumbling over all my words today. But Keanu O'Neal with the most tackles on the team. Most tackles for a loss goes to 15 for Grady Jarrett. Most sacks goes to 15 for Dante Fowler Jr. That's surprising. Interceptions, 3 for Isaiah Oliver. And safeties is zero, and defensive touchdowns is also zero. So other than that, boys, I would say that it's time to simulate this wild card round against the eight, no, not eight and eight, the ten and six Green Bay Packers. I'm just not thinking today. I don't know what's up with me. I'm sorry about that. But uh, yeah, who do we? Yo, we actually beat them. Okay. Uh, my my vocabulary and my language might seem really weird today. I'm sorry about that. I don't know what's going on. But we are facing Will William Clapp on the Saints, boys. If you don't know who that is, the second string center on the Saints. And we beat William Clapp. Young Hoku versus William Clapp, boys. Legendary name, second string center on the Saints. Will Clapp. Legendary name. I don't know how many times I have to say his name. But still, we have the Seahawks here in the NFC Championship. And I'm going to hop into this game to make sure we can win it. So let's do that right now. And here we are in the Seahawks game as it is 24 to 21 against the Seattle Seahawks and it is 23 to 24 apparently now 30 to 23 one minute left in the game 23 to 30 still and I think that might be your game it is 30 to 23 is your score as the Atlanta Falcons are moving on to the Super Bowl in the first year so I'm I'm very excited to do this in the first year. I know it wasn't too much of a rebuild. I kind of stripped the team. We didn't really improve on any players. We got draft picks, but we still made it to the Super Bowl. And of course, we're here to face the Browns because the Browns are freaking Madden simulation gods and it pisses me off every year. But still, we have a lot of dev ups such as Dante Fowler Jr. with Unfakeable because he had a 15 sack season. Pretty good. And we got this guy as well, Malik Walker. And... Um, if I said his name wrong, his first name wrong, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just stupid and illiterate. But Fosada Luakon, I don't know how I can pronounce this, but not that. He also has a dev up, and he seems to progress very fast in Madden franchise, as I always seem to play. And Isaiah Oliver also gets star dev for having the most interceptions on the team, I believe. So I'm going to start him over the rookie. And apart from that, everything else here looks pretty good. I'm going to start Isaiah Oliver also in the slot. And other than that, everything here looks good. So everything looks kind of the same on offense. But other than that, boys, it is time to jump into the Super Bowl matchup against the Cleveland Browns. So here we are in the Super Bowl with the Cleveland Browns in the fourth quarter. It is 27-14 as we are losing 35-14 now as we are getting blown out because for some reason Baker Mayfield is just an absolute god. We lose 35-14 in the Super Bowl. Very disappointing day as the Falcons lose once again and Matty Ice loses once again. Thankfully, we didn't choke a lead like they always do anyways. So yeah, other than that, the uh, Cleveland Browns get the Super Bowl and that's a pretty disappointing way to end the season for us. And your Super Bowl MVP is Baker Mayfield, 253 yards, 3 TDs, 1 interceptions, 57.1% completion rates. So pretty solid game for him. The completion rate wasn't too high, but still, other than that, let's get into the offseason. Here we are in the offseason coming off a loss to the Browns in the Super Bowl, obviously, and we have players to resign such as Alex Mack. Uh, I don't want to resign him. He's not going to be anything good. Uh, he regressed four overalls, and Demonte Kazi, or Kaz, I, I'm, I'm going to love kicking him off the team because I can't pronounce him. He's regressing, and there's nobody else here that I want to resign. So other than that, uh, yeah, that will be it. And I'll be looking to the team real quick to see how Matty Ice has regressed, actually. Matty Ice went from an 87 with morale to an 81 with morale. So now he's technically a 79 overall. Regressing big time. I'm going to have to draft a QB and probably trade Matty Ice because he takes up $40 million a year in cap room. And I'm not going to pay a 79 overall quarterback to do that. So other than that, boys, let's jump into free agency. 
So here we are in free agency as we obviously don't have that much money. We only have $730,000 to spend. So other than that, let's just jump into the draft. Here we are in the draft picking up a defensive back, 76 overall normal development. Probably going to move him to free safety just because... I need one, and yeah, that's all I need. And next, we're picking up another defensive back. I, hope, I thought he was going to have, like, a star dev or something, but he didn't. So I guess he's just going to play defense. Next, we're picking up a center to replace Alex Mack. It's going to be much cheaper, and I think he'll do just about the same thing. So that's pretty good. Normal development, though. Next, we're picking up a QB. Sadly, only normal development, 73 overall. Hopefully, he can progress and get rookie of the year and get star dev in the first year. But this is what the team looks like after the draft as the O-line, I guess, has regressed after free agency. But they're very young, and we just need to make this team younger. It was definitely an older group of people. Probably going to trade away Matty Ice, but uh, this D-line looks absolutely amazing or tremendous, however you want to say it. But I moved the defensive back down to well, up to free safety, and everything else here looks pretty good. I'm pretty satisfied with this team, and... Other than that, guys, I'd say that it is time to jump into some trades, especially with Matty Ice. And we are trading away Matty Ice and our left guard, a second string left guard, who takes up a lot of cap for a four and a seven. The Jaguars were the only team that had cap room and were, weren't really interested in these players. So here we are in the midseason mark, coming off a of bye weekend, and we did get gypped by the Jaguars just a little bit, but still, I needed to trade them away. They were cap room and they were second string players, but we have players to resign, such as Fosato Luwakon, as we are on a three and four season. I'm going to keep him around for five years, stretch out that deal a little bit, and he stays with the team. Isaiah Oliver is here, and he seems to be pr progressing pretty well as I stretch out his contract, and he's pretty cheap for a defensive back, especially for one with his potential, and I stretch out his contract, and he stays with the team, so that's very good. And everyone else here I do not have an interest for, so other than that, boys, I would say that it is time to jump into the playoffs. Here we are in the playoffs coming off a loss to the Eagles, if I can actually speak today. Very, very sorry for me not being able to speak today, but we finished 7-9 and nine behind the Buccaneers and the Saints, but above the Panthers. And our rookie 27th best offense, 15th best defense, QB almost had 4,000 yards, 26 TDs, and 12 interceptions. Pretty good for a rookie QB. Todd Gurley almost had 1,000 yards, but 6 TDs. Receiving-wise, Julio Jones with over a 1,000 yards and 6 TDs as well. Everyone just seems to get 6 TDs. But Foasada Luwakon with the most tackles on team, most tackles for a loss, goes to 13 for Foasada Luwakon again. And sacks goes to 6 for Dante Fowler Jr. We're not getting much pressure. Interceptions is 5 for Isaiah Oliver. That's pretty good. Safeties is 0, I believe. No, 1 for Marlon Davidson. And the offensive touchdowns is 0. So, other than that, boys, I would say that it is time to jump into the offseason. So, here we are in the offseason as the Kansas City Chiefs beat the Packers in the Super Bowl. But we have some players to resign here. And from the looks of it, I actually don't want to resign anyone here. I don't have any interest here. And surprisingly, Josh Rosen is our second string QB. Seems to be bouncing from team to team, which is a little bit weird in my opinion. But. Sadly, our QB did not get star development offensively, but defensively, we got a lot of dev ups with Isaiah Oliver with superstar dev and return men, and Fosada Luakon with superstar dev now. And that's what I was talking about. Fosada Luakon really progresses fast as he has mid zone KO as his ability. And it looks like I'm going to move Isaiah Oliver up just because of his ability. So, other than that, boys, it is time to jump into free agency. So after free agency, this is what the team looks like, and I really didn't have that much money. So I picked up a second string halfback because we were uh, kind of needed depth there, but I picked up Rojo and special teams. I did kind of nothing there either, actually. So other than that, boys, it is time to jump into the draft. Here we are in the draft picking up a left outside linebacker. I'm going to move him to middle linebacker for depth for Deion Jones. 75 overall, hidden development, pretty good pick in my opinion. Next, we're going to pick up a wide receiver, absolute speed demon with 97 speed, 77 overall, only normal development though. And this is what the team looks like after the draft, and I expect that speed demon to completely cook people in the slot. I'm going to keep him in the slot for the time being, and hopefully he can progress into a bigger and star dev or something like that. So I'm going to regenerate the best lineup, and where is he? Uh, I guess he's not there, so I guess I'll do that later. But uh, defensively, I moved the outside linebacker to middle linebacker, so that way he can just be a second string middle linebacker because I want depth at that position. I feel like it actually affects the game. So other than that, let's get to the midseason mark. Here we are at the midseason mark, coming off a loss of the Steelers as we are 1-6. 
Yikes. Seems like the Falcons in today's era, basically. Not today's era, but today's seasonal, if you guys are up to date with the season. But still, Grady Jarrett here, superstar development, 92 overall. would like to keep him on the team. Going to be a massive contract for him, but I do want to keep him on the team, and he stays with the team. Calvin Ridley is here. I would like to keep him around, obviously, and spread out that contract just a little bit. And he does resign with the team. But Dante Fowler Jr. is here as well, superstar dev. 84 overall though, but a uh, big contract for an 84 overall, but still I would like to keep him around as he stays with the team. Hayden Hurst is here as well. A little bit on the older side, but I feel like he'll be good for us for the rest of the rebuild. So I feel like that's good enough for me and he stays with the team as well. Everyone else here I don't really have an interest for. So other than that guys, I would say that it is time to jump into the playoffs. Now here we are in the playoffs coming off a loss to the Panthers, getting blown out by the Panthers. We are at the bottom of the division at 5-11, and 11, but our QB once again had a good season. He seems like a pretty good QB, but for some reason we're not performing. 27th best defense, 13th best offense, that's probably it. Uh, almost 4,400 4, yards, God I'm an idiot. 36 TDs, Todd Gurley over 1,000 yards and 4 TDs, but Rojo had 7 TDs. Uh, Julio Jones another 1,000 yard season with 11 TDs. And inter, not interceptions, defensively. God, I can't speak today. Fos out of Lucon with the most tackles. Most tackles for a loss goes to 16 for Grady Jarrett. Most sacks goes to 7 for Dante Fowler Jr. Interceptions goes to 2 for Isaiah Oliver. Not really getting much pressure and not getting a lot of interceptions or turnovers. Safeties is 0 and defensive touchdowns is 0. So not a great season for the de defense, definitely. But still... Overall, not the worst team, but let's get into the offseason. Now, here we are in the offseason as the Dallas Cowboys beat the Kansas City Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's funny that you think the Dallas Cowboys would actually even make the playoffs. But still, I don't have any interest for anyone else here. So other than that, we're going to look into the team to see if there's any development upgrades. Hopefully, our QB can actually get something. And he does. Star Dev, thank God. 79 overall, Star Dev. Yeah, as you can see, the CPU gave it to him, and everything else here looks the same. Defensively, we look the same as Fosada Luwakon now has Superstar X Factor, actually, with Zonehawk and Lumberjack as his new Superstar abilities and Superstar X Factor ability. Other than that, everyone else here looks the same. So, apart from that, boys, it is time to get to the draft. Not the draft, I meant to say free agency. I feel dumb. Offensively, we didn't do anything, but defensively, big, big pickups as we got a free safety as I moved Jair Alexander from defensive back to free safety as this was a big pickup. Nobody ever goes for him. I don't know why, so I got him pretty cheap, so let's get to the draft. And in the draft, we're going for our final season, so welcome to the unrealistic trades as I'm trading a first and a second for Alvin Kamara, 98 overall superstar X-Factor. Next, I'm trading with a 2, a 3, and a 6 for the right tackle, Mitchell Swartz, as I'm going to move him to left tackle because it is the final season, and here's another unrealistic trade. Quentin Nelson, she's a first and a 2 for Quentin Nelson. It used to be a lot easier to trade for him, but since he's a 99 overall, he's a lot harder. But a first and a 2 for Quentin Nelson. Now we are trading a first, a two, and a four for Rodney Hudson. I don't know why Rodney Hudson is worth more than Quentin Nelson, but uh, I guess he is. So we got a beast halfback, and we upgraded this O-line amazingly. This quarterback should have no problem at all with this team. I don't know how Dak Prescott has a problem with his offense. His offense is amazing, but still, enough crapping on Dak Prescott. It's time to jump into the offseason. I meant to say midseason. God, I suck in commentating today, but we are 5-2. and two. That's what I like to see. Top the division above the 4-3 and three New Orleans Saints. And we have players to resign, but just like every season in the final season, I don't resign them because it is the final season. And we'd be definitely screwed on cap this year. So other than that, boys, it is time to jump into the playoffs. Now, here we are in the playoffs with a first round bye coming off a win to the Jags. And we are 12-4 and four above the 8-8 eight eight New Orleans Saints, who probably made the playoffs, actually. We have Jason Pollock here, our uh, quarterback, who actually had another pretty good season. Again, really short from 4,000 yards, only by 5 yards. But still, 30 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. Rushing-wise, Alvin Kamara was a monster. 1,200 yards, 15 TDs, and Rojo had 10 TDs as well. Receiving-wise, very good ball distribution, I would say. But uh, still, Julio Jones had a pretty good season. And defensively, I would say Deion Jones with most tackles on team, most tackles for a loss, goes to... 
17 for Grady Jarrett, and most sacks goes to if my game will actually load and stop being slow. Eight, eight and a half for Dante Fowler Jr. Sacks, not sacks, interceptions. Four for Jair Alexander. My brain is just not in it today, guys. Sorry. And safeties is zero, and defensive touchdowns is zero. So, not great defensively, I would say. Still not getting a lot of pressure, but still, we're going to simulate this wild card round and see who we are going to be playing in the divisional round because we have this first round bye, obviously. We are going to be playing the 9 and 7 Philadelphia Eagles as in four. So, I'm going to actually hop into this game to make sure we can win it because it is the final season. So, other than that, boys, it is time to hop into this game. So here we are with the Philadelphia Eagles as it is 27 to 38. And that will actually be your game. I know that was really quick. I waited till the very end to record there. Uh, but still, 27 38 is your final score against the Eagles. And here we are in the conference championship here to face the LA Rams. Their new logo kind of looks whack, but also kind of looks good at the same time. It's kind of grown on me, I'm not going to lie. But still, let's jump into the game. And here we are with the uh, LA Rams as it is 23 to 48, now 55 to 23, now 30 to 55. Blowout game kind of there at the end, but still great as we are moving on to the Super Bowl. And here we are in the Super Bowl here to face the 14 and 2 Kansas City Chiefs. That is quite the record that they have, but we are a 93 overall team. I did not think we were that high, but still, offensively, we look the exact same. I'm going to start Julio Jones over Calvin Ridley. Surprise, Calvin Ridley did not get a dev up throughout this rebuild, but uh, defensively, we actually look the same. But actually, no, Deion Lewis looked the superstar dev, but it doesn't really matter. So other than that, boys, let's just jump into the Super Bowl. Here we are in the Super Bowl here to face off against the Kansas City Chiefs as it is 14 to 28. One minute left in the fourth quarter, 31 to 14. This game is definitely out of reach for them. And 31 to 14 is your final score as the Atlanta Falcons win the Super Bowl without Matty Ice in their new QB. I think this is our third year QB. Pretty good QB. I'm very happy with this pick. But anyways, let's get to the MVP. And the third year QB, Jason Pollock. Uh, 344 yards, two TDs, and one interception. So very, very solid game for him. Not great, but anyways, that's going to be it. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys all enjoyed because I know I did. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you like and or subscribe. It really helps out me and it really helps out the channel in general. But if there's anything else that you guys want to see or any other rebuild or anything like that, please make sure you comment it down below. And as I was saying before, Deion Jones did get Superstar Dev. And yeah, Young Ho Koo here, most legendary guy ever. He has focused kicker as the superstar ability as well. And yeah, that's going to be it for this video. It was definitely a successful rebuild considering that we went to the Super Bowl twice, only one at once. But still, anyways, guys, once again, that's going to be it for this rebuild. And I'll see you guys all in the next one.